Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and welcome to another edition of PSVR News. So I've got a couple of things to talk about so let's just jump right in. So this first bit of news is all about the PS5 and it comes from Jason Schreier who was formerly a Kotaku journalist and now currently works with uh, Bloomberg.com and this is his first article over there and I don't know if you know Jason Schreier but he's kind of super well connected in the gaming industry. He's got like a huge network of contacts. Usually when he says something, like 99% of the time it happens, it comes true. So he is someone, he does have reliable sources and he's nearly always right. So what he's saying here is that Sony is planning a PS5 conference for as early as next week, June 3rd to be precise. So I'll just read out a couple of bits here. So Sony Core is planning a digital event to showcase games for its next generation PS5 console that may take place as early as next week according to people with direct knowledge of the matter. So the virtual event could be held June 3rd, though some people also caution that plans have been in flux and that that date may change. So do keep that in mind, it's not guaranteed a June 3rd release, but seeing as we're just like a few days away, it seems it's unlikely that that will change, but just keep that in the back of your mind just in case. This is not 100% concrete. He says other PlayStation events may follow in the coming weeks and months and Sony is not expected to reveal every essential detail on the console during its first presentation. So what does he mean by essential detail? I think we can assume that when he says essential details, he's talking about things like the price and the release date itself and maybe even the actual box because this might just be focusing on the games, so we might not see the box, probably not going to see a release date, probably not going to see a price either. So why aren't we seeing a price? There's a lot of rumour, a lot of speculation that Sony, that they're kind of playing a game of chicken with Microsoft and their Xbox, they want to wait who's going to blink first. They want Microsoft to go first with their price, and then depending on whatever price Microsoft gives the Xbox Series X, PlayStation are either going to try and undercut them if they can, or you know, they're just going to change the price accordingly. They do not want to take a loss on the hardware at launch but at the same time most likely they do not want to be more expensive than the xbox series x now as you remember ps4 launched it was like a hundred dollars cheaper than the xbox one this is back in 2013 things changed obviously xbox price went down when they got rid of the connect but that was a huge advantage for sony and that's a huge reason why the ps4 sold so much better and this is other reasons too of course but the price was a huge thing so sony Definitely wanted to see if Microsoft will blink first. As for the dates, they're saying, despite COVID-19 still coming in the holiday 2020, personally, I don't care too much about the specific days. I mean, it's probably going to be November sometime, so I'm not going to be too bummed out if they don't reveal the dates. And honestly, also, I don't really care what the box looks like. I know a lot of people out there really want to see what the box looks like, but I think the controller is way more important. That's the actual part that you look at. The box is just under the TV. But yeah, as we all know, no matter what the box looks like, it's all going to be about the games games are king and this event is going to be all about the games now what games will they show that is the question there are rumors that we're going to see a silent hill reboot there's rumors that we're going to see horizon 2 from guerrilla games and of course there's that long rumored blue point game which is supposedly demon souls so that remake of demon souls from blue point we might see these things but what about psvr well i don't think we're guaranteed to see anything psvr uh, but when you're watching this, you should definitely be keeping an eye on the trailers. It might say somewhere in the corner of the screen of the trailer, you know, uh, PS Viewer support included. So keep an eye out for stuff like that when you're watching these trailers. And of course, keep in mind games like Resident Evil 8. I've talked about Resident Evil 8 in the past. You can check out this video I did earlier on. The link to that video will be in the description if you want to learn more about that. Basically, that Resident Evil 8 game is rumored to be coming next year. So Capcom will want to be announcing that fairly soon. Perhaps this is a good time to do it. Now, I was watching an episode of Kind of Funny Games. Alana Pierce was on us. I don't know if you know her. She used to work with IGN. And she was saying that she knows firsthand because she has friends who are developers. Some of these developers have teamed up with Sony to announce these games. And these announcements were supposed to have been made already, maybe weeks ago, months ago. But because of COVID-19 and Sony insisting that they release them in like a very professional manner, not like, you know, people sitting down in their living rooms recording themselves on a webcam or whatever. So it is possible that Resident Evil Ace was already supposed to be revealed and now maybe we're going to see it revealed on June 3rd. So obviously, that's no guarantee. That's complete rumor and speculation on my part. But I think we're going to see a lot of games announced on June 3rd. So definitely be excited for next Wednesday. So next up, we have some Alvo to talk about. Now, 
First thing we want to say is that Algo have recently released this gameplay footage that you're seeing behind me of a customization. So as you can see, you can change your headwear, your eyewear, your camouflage. Pretty cool to see. But if you've been following the development of Algo, you may know that the developers of Algo submitted the open beta build to Sony QA on the 16th of May and you might be wondering is there any updates on that and there has been an update and it's slightly bad news slightly bad news not awful but uh, let me just read out this post from Steve who is the developer slash investor for Algo so I'll just read it out here he says an update on Sony submission we uploaded the code successfully at 3 a.m. PST on the 16th of May Due to a mismatch between our EU and US reference codes, Sony would not accept the submission until an ID number in their system was updated. We tried, but were unable to get the number updated prior to 4 p.m. PST, which was the cutoff for submission. We immediately tried to see if they could make an exception and review the build since it was not a problem with the code or the upload, but were unable to get this. We have since requested another submission days and are waiting to hear back. We don't anticipate this setting us back too far, as even if this issue had not occurred, we would we would be and still are working on completing items that will be included in both the beta and final release version of the game. We are committed to releasing on PSVR and will keep working while we wait for the updates from our Sony rep. As soon as we get the update, we will post it again here now this was on the 22nd of may that's six days after they submitted the build it is now the 28th of may that's six days again and steve has not posted anything on that discord again he has not updated since which leads me to believe that sony have not gotten back to steve yet with the new submission days so it sounds to me like maybe we're gonna have to be waiting a little bit longer than we expected to get our hands on this open beta for alvo Hopefully not too much longer. Hopefully Steve will have an update on the Discord any day now. But I don't know how Sony QA works. I don't know what happens if you miss that submission days, how much longer you have to waste. Maybe he's to go back to the end of the queue or something. I have no idea how it works. Uh, but fingers crossed, it won't be too long. So that is it for this episode of PS Viewer News. Thank you very much for watching. And in particular, let me give a special thank you to the Patreons whose names are on screen right now. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping this channel grow and evolve. And let me give a particular shout out to the following Pete Hawkins, Tradition, Chopped 517, Columbus Thomas III, and Crumb. Thanks to these guys who are supporting me on the top tier over on Patreon. I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. If you'd like to support me over on Patreon, the link will be in the description below, but don't worry, I will also be perfectly happy with likes and subscribes and shares and all that usual shite. And one last thing, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all my videos. If you want to check out his music for yourself, the links will be in the description below. You can check him out on Bandcamp, Spotify, all that usual shit. That is it for me, lads and ladies. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.